Hello and welcome to the UHCW preoperative shoulder replacement education video. We've made this video to prepare you with all the information that you're going to need before your surgery. After listening to this video, we hope you'll understand more about your shoulder replacement and what to expect afterwards. Hopefully it will enable you to identify the limitations you will have following your surgery and how to prepare in order to make things as successful as possible. And finally, we really want to stress the importance of physiotherapy in your recovery. So with that, I'm going to hand over to a member of the therapy team. You have likely decided to have a shoulder replacement in order to relieve pain, improve the movement in your shoulder and improve your quality of life. Although having your shoulder surgery itself is a necessary stage of this process, the success of your surgery is determined by how much commitment and effort you put into your post-operative rehabilitation. Therefore, this is our chance to make you aware of your responsibilities in making your operation a success. We recommend watching this video with a friend or relative so you have a good understanding of all the information provided. These are the things we expect you to do before your surgery. Firstly, read the leaflets that have been sent to you as they contain important information. Also, listen to the advice we are giving you in this video. This may mean you need to watch the video more than once and take notes. And please remember, we're always here to help. If you have a particular concern, then please make a note of it and ask us when a member of the team calls you in due course. The most important action of this video is encouraging you to think about how your home is arranged. You will need to rearrange your home environment in order to make life easier. Often things are tucked away. Therefore, positioning items you regularly use somewhere easy to reach is essential. For example, leave items on the side or in low cupboards. You should also think about what food you want to eat following your surgery. If you are on your own, food needs to be easy to prepare. For example, ready meals or meals that you have pre-made and frozen which just need reheating. Make arrangements for someone to take you shopping or order your food online from a supermarket can be the easiest way. Please note, you'll be in a sling and only able to use one arm. If you're finding this hard to imagine, have a go by holding one arm by your side for an entire day. Make a list of the things you are unable to manage alone and bring them up with someone you know. If you're fortunate enough to have a family member for support, see if they can pop in and help assist you with these activities. For example, ask them to make you something for lunch like a sandwich or open a tin of soup or even complete some laundry tasks. Alternatively, is there a neighbour or friend that can do this in the short term? Lastly, patients are responsible for their own transport to and from the hospital. You will be informed of your admission date well in advance and are likely to go home the day after your surgery, so you should arrange for someone to collect and take you home. You have been sent a home circumstances questionnaire in the post. Please complete this early for when the therapy team call you and remember to bring it on the day of your surgery. There are two aspects you will need to prepare before your surgery. We have informed you on tips on preparing your home, but you also need to prepare your body. You need to be in the best condition possible to recover and heal from your surgery. If you smoke, you should seek advice on stopping as it can delay healing. Also make sure that you are eating and drinking well and try to exercise even just by walking once a day. Try and get your non-operated arm as strong as possible. The shoulder joint is fascinating as it has a very large range of movement. We can put our hand behind our back tuck in our shirt, do up a bra, comb our hair and even throw and catch a ball. We also need a strong shoulder to aim and position our hands for precise tasks like signing our name. Due to the large range of movement, the shoulder actually has to be inherently unstable. As the shoulder is naturally unstable, it is therefore more likely to be injured. We are very reliant of the muscles around the shoulder for our shoulder to work normally. These are called the rotator cuff and you may have injured them in the past. You may have fallen onto an outstretched arm or repetitively used your shoulder through the years. This being said, secondary arthritis can occur. Compared to a normal joint, the cartilage which helps create smooth, pain-free movement wears down, causing reduced movement pain and loss of function. You may have tried physiotherapy in the past, or your shoulder has become progressively worse with no improvement, and this is why you've decided to have the joint replaced. A total shoulder replacement is primarily performed for relief of pain in the shoulder. However, 
After surgery, as pain improves, you may find you have better movement and function. In a shoulder replacement, the ball and socket joint is replaced with an artificial joint, and there are several different types. Your consultant will select the best type for you depending on the quality and quantity of bone, as well as the strength and muscles of your shoulder. If you are having a reverse shoulder replacement, the ball and socket position is changed so other muscles can work more efficiently with better range of movement. Here is an example of an x-ray following a total shoulder replacement. And here is an x-ray following a reverse shoulder replacement. Coming for your surgery. Read through this list and bring everything you will need for an overnight stay. Remember to bring clothes which are easy to put on, such as loosely fitting shirts, blouses or cardigans. Trousers with an elasticated waist will also be easier to put on with one arm. On the morning of your surgery, you'll be greeted by the staff on Cedar Ward. You will be assessed by your surgeon and an ethetist to check you are fit for surgery and answer any questions you may have. You'll be asked to sign a form giving your consent for the operation. Someone from the therapy team will also come and talk to you and ensure you have made arrangements for support at home. There are many reasons that you will only be in hospital for one night. These include reducing risk of infection, complying with national guidelines, and also improved rest and recovery in the peace of your own home. Depending on your anaesthetist decision, you may have a general anaesthetic. Be aware, the side effects of this include nausea, sickness, and low blood pressure. A nerve block will also be required to carry out the surgery. Therefore, you won't be able to feel your arm or hand when you wake up. Don't be alarmed. This is used to continue pain relief for 8 to 12 hours after your surgery. Although in some patients, this effect can last longer or shorter. You will also be prescribed pain relief to keep your pain at a tolerable level whilst allowing you to complete your physiotherapy exercises. It is expected that you will have a level of discomfort as the medication cannot fully take away the pain. A sling will also be in situ when you wake up and you will wear this at all times except for exercising, washing and dressing. A physiotherapist will teach you how to apply and remove the sling and show you the specific ways to move your arm safely. We will make it clear exactly how long you will wear the sling as this can vary from surgery and patient. After your operation, your arm will be painful. This will improve every day if you follow the advice from the staff. You should take your pain relief regularly it is important you do not refuse pain relief when offered. You may be comfortable while sitting or lying, but when asked to do more, your pain will increase. It's important to let the ward staff know if you're in pain so we can control it. You will not be alone, so using ice and analgesia can relieve the pain, so please don't be afraid to ask. Sickness is another side effect caused by medication. Again, it is essential that you let the nursing staff know if you're feeling unwell so they can control it. The sling is used to protect your shoulder replacement whilst it heals. The shoulder is essentially immobilized so you cannot lift, push up, carry or lean on your arm. This picture shows what your sling will look like. We will teach you how to put this on and take it off. If you live alone, you will need to be able to do this independently using only your non-operated arm. This can be tricky, so please ask your family or friends for support. We advise combining personal care like washing and dressing with your daily exercises to limit the number of times you remove the sling each day. This is usually only three times. The day after your surgery you will see a physiotherapist who will fit your sling and look at your ability to complete daily tasks such as the ones listed to ensure that you can manage at home. They will also go through your exercises which are as follows. There are maintenance exercises for joints other than the shoulder. There are basic neck and elbow exercises, like the one shown here. There are also wrist and hand exercises, which you can start as soon as you can feel and move your arm within your sling. There is likely to be some passive movement exercises to complete for your shoulder itself. These will need to be carried out by someone else for you. Please have someone in mind who can do this if required. You can take pain relief 15 minutes before starting the exercises and you should use ice for 15 to 20 minutes after. As previously mentioned, eating well is important, particularly for recovery. Eating fresh fruit and veg, lots of protein such as meats with high fiber, vitamin C and D in your diet. 
Please continue using analgesia at home every four hours and you can decrease this gradually over time. To wash under the arm, a therapist will teach you the pendular hang technique. This is not an exercise, just for hygiene. Your therapist will also teach you how to dress and a tip is always to dress the operated arm first. You can practice this from today. Sleeping with multiple pillows behind your back and shoulder can be more comfortable or even sleeping in an upright position. Please remember, you are unable to drive for at least six weeks and returning to work usually takes place eight to 12 weeks post-surgery. And finally, be aware of your balance. Not having your other arm can throw your balance off. So make sure your home environment is accommodating. To recap, read the information sent in the post and rewatch this video if it will help. If you live alone, reach out to relatives, friends or neighbors. And finally, spend a day just using one arm and note down what you were struggling with. You are going to struggle with activities of daily living, such as washing and dressing, wiping your bottom with potentially the wrong hand and cooking and eating. Practice and prepare now. If you feel some tasks are too difficult, you could purchase some equipment, for example, a shower chair or perching stool, kettle tipper, some cutting equipment, or a long handled comb, sponge, or shoehorn. Once discharged home, your follow up physiotherapy appointment will be via telephone or video call, and a decision will be made whether you need to come into the department or not. You'll be told in advance if this will be the case so you can organise transport. And finally, after you leave hospital and work with your physiotherapist, most improvements will be felt in the first six months, but strength and movement can continue to improve for up to two years after your surgery. So keep working. We look forward to meeting you.